Hi, this is Marius Aralambus, and this is, long story short, episode 3. I call this Uncommon Sense. Have you ever noticed people walking around wearing t-shirts bearing the message, common sense is so uncommon? It's a rather popular message with many t-shirt manufacturers, from their smallest boutique firms to the largest multinationals, and with good reason. You see, this is a message I fully abide by, and in fact, I have some things in my mind that will help me prove my point. So, for starters, why is it that, to the best of my knowledge, the authorities issuing aircraft piloting licenses do not cross-check their applicants' profiles with the traffic police? Why is it, for example, that someone who could, lost, who could have lost their driver's license for getting caught driving under the effects of alcohol, for instance, is allowed at the same time to sit exams and receive a pilot's license. Isn't that unreasonable? Point number two. Why is it that in Cyprus, if you get caught driving at 120 km per hour, you get fined? For those of you living abroad, believe it or not, the highest speed limit on all roads in Cyprus is 100 km per hour. You know, the, the people responsible for the speed limits, for the determination of speed limits on the island are not exactly nuclear physicists. Uh, they need to take their time in order to make an obvious decision to increase them. The, uh, the speed limits have, have been like that since the 1960s, by the way. <laughs> Anyhow, back to my original point. Why is it that if you get caught driving at 120 km per hour in Cyprus, you get fined? But if you get caught driving at, say, 300 km per hour, you're allowed to drive away. You will, of course, later on be summoned to the court, but until that time, you're not paying any fines, and you're even allowed to drive away in your own vehicle. They don't even impound it. Point number three. If the British bases in Cyprus are considered to be crown leasehold land, then why is it that in so many maps they appear as UK territory? As the name implies, it is land that has been granted by the rightful owner, which is the Republic of Cyprus, to the UK under the terms of a lease. Therefore, the legal owner, the rightful owner, is the Republic of Cyprus. It is Cypriot territory. If I rent a piece of land from someone else, uh, or even from the Republic, and name it Mario Land, for instance, will this appear on maps as a legitimate claim? Doesn't make much sense, does it? Uh, and, by the way, how would you call someone that hasn't paid rent for the past 60 or so years, that yet they continue to occupy your home by force? I'm just wondering. Hmm. Point number four. Did you know that it's not mandatory for school buses in Cyprus to bear passenger seat belts? This is supposedly because there are a lot of old school buses in Cyprus, so our lawmakers, in all their infinite wisdom, decided that the way they should go about increasing the number of available buses in the market would be to skip on some safety requirements. I mean, why not? It's only our children we're talking about, right? So what if we lose some? We can always make more. I guess that was their reasoning. But this is only about school buses that are used on a permanent basis. <laughs> if a school bus, if a school wants to rent a bus on a one-off basis to transport children, that school bus needs to comply with all modern safety regulations and requirements. Why is it that common sense is so uncommon? <laughs> Point number five. Why on earth is it allowed in some of the largest cities of the globe for heavy vehicles to roam the streets between seven and nine o'clock in the morning on weekdays and drive at a snail's pace in order to get to their destination. Using the same reasoning, why is it allowed for supply and delivery vehicles to use the streets during that same time frame on weekdays and stop every five minutes? 
as if the morning rush wasn't bad enough. In many cities, this has already been prohibited. Hopefully, it will become a global standard in a few years. Even in the relatively small Cypriot cities of Nicosia and Limassol, the amount of problems caused by this kind of vehicles that are driving around on weekday mornings is nothing less but surreal. This topic could easily drag along well into the next hour or so, so I will make just one more point and be done with it. What will it take for someone to finally force the companies renting June baggies to tourists in Ayanapa, Cyprus to finally start asking for their customers' credit card details prior to giving them the keys to their vehicles? Just last year, there were 3,000, yes, you heard that right, 3,000 unpaid tickets by tourists in Ayanapa alone. What does it take to finally stop that shameful vogue of lawlessness that is incited by those cheap local businessmen who are even going as far as to tell their customers in advance that should they receive a fine while driving their June baggies, they shouldn't care about paying them because everyone lives for their respective countries without ever being persecuted. Finally, I will leave you with a question that someone sent just a few minutes ago through the contact forms of my website. I think it is appropriate that I replied via this video. It goes like this. <laughs> Don't even make my own letters. Uh, Marius, if you're not charging anything for your updates, neither do you place ads or sell anything on your website, why are you dedicating so much time and energy on this blog? What's the catch? Well, my friend, to cut a long story short, I guess I too lack some common sense. 